This this happens when these two branches are, we call them clones. Now, if you if you read science fiction, you know about clones. The clones are identical, genetically identical things. So if they're genetically identical, you're you're stuck together. So imagine that you're going into a singles bar as as a fungus, and every time you touch somebody, it's Oh, no, it's me again. And then you decide you want to leave and you're all stuck together, you know? It's, it's really a very different, different kind of life when you're a fungus. So everything with fungi is about spores. This is just a little galaxy of, of uh, different kinds of, uh, kinds of spores. And um, they can be very beautiful to a human eye, but really for a fungus, they're an escape mechanism. They're like a rocket ship. <clears throat> Excuse me. They want to get from one place to another, and if you know if you can't just keep on growing like like this, if you've reached a wall or something and you want to get going uh, on the other side, you've got to have a spore, and, and so that's what they do. So this shows that's a little fungus. It's about two millimeters on the tall on the right, and then this is a. A, a lit up view of what's coming out of the top of those things. So there's thousands of spores just floating out like, like smoke, as if this fungus has just elected a pope. Now I'd be remiss in my duty as a popularizer of, on microfungi not to show you Pylopolis. And we won't discuss what Pylopolis grows on, but it's a beautiful thing. Grows up like this, makes this balloon, has, has the dark uh, mass of spores on the top and they shoot off and, and uh, I have to show you this. This is the only one of the videos that's not time lapse. This is slowed down. And if you look on the internet, you'll find this and it's set to Verdi's Anvil Chorus. If you know your, uh, classical music, it's da 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 So it's, anyway, this is the only fungus that does that, but I, I have to show you that. It's really quite spectacular. All right, so to the main topic of the day, uh, five fungi that changed the world. I'm going to talk in, um, about genera, not so much about species. And the first is Aspergillus. So this is a true story. I don't know if this television show, the, X, the X-Files, was shown in India. I know it was shown in, uh, you're nodding your heads, okay, so you know what the X-Files was. One Friday afternoon, I got a telephone call. And it was from somebody who said they were working for the X-Files. And I thought, oh, come on, you know, who's gonna phone me from the X-Files? But what it was, was they were looking for a culture of a rust fungus that they could take out of a refrigerator and, and hand from one person to another in this episode of the X-Files, and they needed it tomorrow. And I explained to them that rust fungi don't grow in culture, so that you can't have a culture of a rust fungus. It's not going to go that way. Maybe you should rewrite the script. But they didn't rewrite the script, and, and when, when it showed on television, what ha happened was that they took a petri dish out of the refrigerator, and they put it right under the microscope and looked, and what it was was spores of a mushroom that they bought at the grocery store. So it was a bit of a letdown from, from that point of view, but the most spectacular thing in the show was this. Now, I couldn't find a video for this on the, on the internet, it, probably just as well, because it's quite gruesome. This woman was walking through the grocery store, and she gets attacked by this fungus, and in real time, just, just flowing across, and it grabs her and pulls her down on the floor, and it starts to sporulate all over her. Now, if you know that color, that yellow-green color, that's intended to be Aspergillus. Aspergillus is actually quite beautiful, and that was, that's what was in the first video that I showed you with when we shrunk down to that size. This is what it looks like through the dissecting microscope and through the uh, compound microscope, any mycologist worth his immersion oil is going to recognize what Aspergillus looks like. And the name comes from this uh, implement that was used, that's used in the Catholic Church. It's called Aspergillum. It's used for baptizing little babies. And the person who first described Aspergillus was this man, uh, Pierre Antonio Michelli, and of course he was a priest. So he knew what 
what an aspergillum was, and he called aspergillus on after that, and there's his drawing up at the top of the slide. Right, so the real story of aspergillus, the importance, how it changed the world, begins with turkeys. And these are turkeys in my yard, they're wild turkeys. Um, they make a mess, they upset the dog. But the turkeys that are more important are these turkeys that, uh, these are the ones that in America anyway we eat. In the UK they eat these turkeys. and So they've, they have a different shape and they've learned to play football as you can see. I don't, I don't want to make, make too much fun of turkeys. You see, they're, they're, they look quite concerned there that I'm, I'm mocking them. But the problem was something called Turkey X disease. And this occurred in the period after the Second World War in the UK. Turkey started to die. And what happened was that the, the UK still was under food rationing after the, after the German bombardment during the war. So, all of the protein, all of the good protein was going to people and they, they imported potato, oh, sorry, peanut meal from Brazil and fed it to the turkeys and the, and the turkeys started dying. And uh, the reason they started dying was because peanuts are a favorite substrate for this fungus called Aspergillus flavus. Flavus is that, that greenish yellow color. And uh, that's why it's called aflatoxin, so it's after uh, Aspergillus flavus. And this is one of the most toxic natural products, natural chemicals known. It's highly carcinogenic, and uh, we discovered it because of these turkeys. And then when we started looking around, we saw that it was everywhere. Um, aflatoxin also likes maize. Um, at about the same time, maize it was being promoted as a miracle crop for the developing world. And so it started to be grown in many parts of the world that it, where it had never been grown before. But Aspergillus favus was there, so it, and it loves uh, corn. <laughs> so th there's a great risk of aflatoxin contamination in the tropical parts of the world, as you can see on this map, and that tends to be the areas where, where peanuts and, and, and uh, maize are used a lot. It's a very heavily regulated toxin. Most countries have regulations in the parts per billion, and it's very actively regulated. So in most parts of the world, we're safe from aflatoxin, but when you look at this, uh, this heat map, you know, you see there's parts of Africa in particular where they don't have the regulations and it can be quite a serious issue even now. And unfortunately, there are, I don't, this isn't unfortunate, but it's ironic that, that uh, in some countries you can buy food for your pet that's certified to be aflatoxin free, but you can't do the same for your children. I, I, I think that's very uh, strange. The irony of Turkey X disease is that it probably was not actually caused by aflatoxin. It was probably caused by this toxin called cyclopiazonic acid. And the reason we think that is because the symptoms of Turkey X disease are, are what uh, that, that poor chicken is doing. And, and so that tightening of the back of the neck, that, that is uh, called epistotonus. And, and that, so it's a bit ironic that we found out about aflatoxin about a disease, from this disease, but it didn't seem to cause the disease. So here's the good story about aspergillus, or the start of the good stories. Now, this is various soya sauce-like products that come from, um, from Japan and China. And this product is made with an aspergillus. And genetically, this aspergillus is the same as aspergillus flavus. How is it that in this traditional fermentation, they ended up using strains of aspergillus that didn't produce aflatoxin when we wouldn't learn, know about aflatoxin for another thousand years? It's very strange. But it's probably because aflatoxin is so poisonous that that uh, you know you would never make anything with it deliberately, and so I'm, there, there probably was a, a um, process of, of selection. And we th we look at these uh, species that are used in 
soy sauce production um, as, as domesticated forms of the wild species that make